In a previous episode of Wild Marlboro, we spent some time highlighting several different kinds of invasive species. Invasives are categorized as plants or animals that are not indigenous to a specific area that can harm or change the environment that they have been introduced to. And while we learned about dangerous invasives such as the Asian clam in Fort Meadow and the ever-prevalent bittersweet plant that caused trees to be cleared around Lake Williams, there is one visitor to the Metro West area that has the potential to become the most devastating intruder of all. In the 1960s, the Beatles invaded America. They brought with them a new style of music, forever changing the landscape of the music industry as we know it. Roughly 40 years later, a completely different kind of beetle arrived in the country, threatening to change the physical landscape of America's natural habitats. You'd be hard pressed to find anyone starting a fan club for this beetle. It's the Asian long-horned beetle. And among local experts, it's public enemy number one. Oh yes, by far. And in New England, and if it is not the top in the country, definitely in the top five, but in this area, it is paramount. Asian longhorn beetle is certainly number one. Helping us learn more about our subject is Clint McFarland. He's the USDA's federal program manager for the Asian Longhorn Beetle Cooperative Eradication Program. Yeah, that's quite a mouthful, isn't it? Clint's been tracking down the Asian Longhorn for several years in the area, and he expects to be here for some time to come. So I've worked on Asian Longhorn Beetle for the past nine years, have come up from New York City working on this. I've worked with invasive in insects for my entire career throughout the country, but as far as Asian longhorn beetle, it has been here. I've never seen the scope and the magnitude. So the numbers of trees that have been infested and the level of infestation on these trees has been biggest here in New England and localized here in central Massachusetts. So what exactly makes this beetle so dangerous that it requires its own division of the USDA to fight it? One of the Asian longhorn beetle's favorite foods is the maple tree. And if you take a look out your window, you'll realize that your backyard might be an all-you-can-eat buffet. When you really look at the maples, that's a very big concern for all of us here in New England. That makes up a large portion of the density of our northeastern hardwood forest. And so it can be very, very problematic for the different economic damage, let alone the aesthetic and the environmental ecological factors uh, that we have, the ramifications that it can cause with being out there and infesting these trees. Elms, willows, and birches are also on the menu among other hardwood deciduous trees. And it's because of the way the beetle eats these trees that makes it so volatile. Adult longhorned beetles don't live much longer than 50 days and feed on a variety of plant parts like stems, barks, and leaves, which can cause some damage to a tree. However, the real carnage originates from the ravenous appetite of their offspring. During its larval stage, the beetle needs to feed constantly on the interior of the tree in order to reach a certain weight needed for pupation, much like a butterfly. This process can take up to two years. That's plenty of time for even the smallest insect to devour the inside of a tree, killing it and making it structurally unstable. And once the larvae get started on a certain tree, there's no turning back. As the larvae progress into different stages of development, they move farther into the tree, making chemical treatment and pesticides impossible to use. Because they are so deep inside the tree, the tree must be cut down. Those stages go into the sapwood, the heartwood of the tree. And the analogy I use there is that's like our skeleton. That's not really our living tissue. That's our skeleton that gives us our structural integrity. Once they're in there, the chemical cannot get after them. So if we're going to realize eradication, we have to remove that tree if it is infested, but we do use some chemical measures to protect other trees that are not infested yet, that are susceptible right close to infested trees. Our goal is to eradicate the insect, but we are looking at preserving and saving as many trees as we possibly can. If infestations are not discovered early, that could spell big trouble. And trouble is exactly what Worcester encountered in August of 2008. 
The infestation was estimated to have been quietly taken place over a period of 10 years. Countless acres of trees had to be removed and landscapes were forever changed. Imagine New England without its trees. It's not the pretty picture we are used to seeing. But Worcester turned out to be exactly what New England needed in order to start taking this threat seriously. The first step in engaging this pest is to identify signs of trouble early on. Because as dangerous as this beetle may be, they are somewhat lazy when it comes to travel. They are only willing to fly short distances and stay on the same tree for most of their life. So once found, they rarely have a chance to escape. With no known predators in the US, our eyes are the best weapons against infestation. One initial sign of infestation is the appearance of a dead or stressed limb. If you happen to notice one, then it might be a good idea to go in for a further investigation. Frass is the excrement material the larvae leave behind and can be one of the most visible pieces of evidence. So like a termite, it's got bacteria in its gut that helps to break down that cellulose material, but some of that is gonna pass through. So that frass material is very coarse, very stringy. When we have found trees infested, it's almost like mulch at the base of the tree. It can be very, very thick. You can pick up handfuls and handfuls of it. Egg laying holes and the impressively precise circular exit holes are yet another way of spotting infestation. The exit holes of the Asian longhorn differ from that of a woodpecker or other wood grazing animal as they are nearly perfectly cylindrical all the way through, so much so that you would be able to fit the array or end of a pencil into the tree. So we can see these egg sites that the female is actually chewed into and you can see trees have an immune system like we do. They get a little bit of bruising around these sites. They try to heal past these sites just like we would but they have a little bit of a bruising. Once again you can see those serrations, you can see those egg sites as they go around this piece of wood that was a limb. If they are present very, very large, three-eighths of an inch in size to even larger. And this is something where you can be out there. You can be looking and you can notice this on your trees. But once again, notice absolutely perfect on those emergence holes when they do come out on those exit holes. Residents need to be aware of these signs and stay vigilant in the fight against the spread of this killer insect. Because after all, we only have ourselves to blame. <laughs> It is believed that the longhorn beetle first made it to U.S. shores by hitching a ride inside the wood used for a wooden shipping pallet. Once it found a taste for America's deciduous trees, it began to spread with the aid of humans via wooden packing materials and firewood. With this scenario in mind, officials took steps to make Worcester and parts of surrounding towns regulated areas for the movement of firewood. And this is something officials don't take lightly. Moving firewood outside of regulated areas is now illegal and comes with heavy fines. Shortly after the incident in Worcester, Marlboro's own tree warden, Chris White, received some calls about some suspicious firewood. A local Marlboro resident was bringing wood from the Worcester area, setting up a potentially disastrous situation. You cannot bring any sort of product out of that area. That's firewood, wood chips, mulch, anything, anything of that sort. Luckily, no signs of the insect were found in the firewood, and officials were lenient on the man who moved the firewood as the regulated areas were only recently implemented. We are just trying to be very diligent about responding to every call. Probably last year, we've had a dozen calls. It's a big deal. It's a big, big deal. Thanks to the precautionary and preventative methods implemented in the area, officials and residents are more prepared for the fight. In the most recent case, Boston became the Beatles' newest victim. Right around the 4th of July, 2010, six red maple trees were cut down in the heart of Jamaica Plain. The USDA and local officials moved quickly and secured a one and a half mile radius beyond the infested area. They were able to conclude that the infestation was localized to just those six trees. The residents of New England are winning the fight by being aware, looking for signs, and notifying officials as soon as possible. One of the best resources in the battle against the beetle is the USDA's Beetle Busters website. At beetlebusters.info, you can find out if you live in an affected or quarantined area. You can view detailed photos of the beetle 
and you can even report your findings directly to the USDA. We must all take responsibility for the impact of the Asian longhorn beetle in order to ensure the safety of our forests in the Metro West area and in New England. For more information and to take action, go to beetlebusters.info. Thank you.